Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Surabhi Sharma. Here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 18th of October. Border areas in India's Jammu and Kashmir face heat of Pakistani firing. Global watchdog gives Pakistan until February to act against terror financing. And Nepal's top court directs government to release Lal Commission report. And now for all the details. Residents of border villages in India's Jammu and Kashmir have been facing the heat of continued ceasefire violations by Pakistan over the past few weeks. They have expressed fear of loss of life and property. The border villages in India's Jammu and Kashmir have been facing the brunt of continued ceasefire violations by the Pakistan Army along the line of control or LOC. The lull is broken almost every day by the loud noise of gunfire and mortar shells from Pakistan's side, which have been landing in civilian areas over the past few weeks, damaging houses and other property. The situation remains tensed, affecting normal lives and people living in the border areas have expressed that they live in a state of fear. बहुत प्रॉब्लम होती है सारे दिन हमारे पास कोई फैसिलिटी नहीं है कोई रहने के लिए जगह नहीं है तो हम कहां जाएंगे रात भर आप जागते हैं दिन को भी कि क्या पता कब दुनिया से बंदा चला जाएगा ड्यूरिंग द लास्ट टू मंथ्स देयर हैव बीन अ लार्ज नंबर ऑफ सीज फायर वायलेशंस बाय द पाकिस्तान आर्मी एंड ड्यूरिंग द सीज फायर वायलेशंस दे हैव यूज्ड स्मॉल आर्म्स एंड हैवी कैलिबर वेपन्स इंक्लूडिंग मोटर्स एंड आर्टिलरी and they have made a deliberate attempt to target the villages and because of this deliberate attempt a few villages have got injured one or two have even lost their lives indian security officials blame that pakistan attempts to push a number of infiltrators during ceasefire violations relations between india and pakistan already hostile have been further strained over india's decision in august to revoke the special status of jammu and kashmir The 46th Chief Justice of India, Justice Ranjan Gogoi, will demit office on November 17th. Chief Justice Gogoi has initiated the process for the appointment of Justice Sharad Arvind Bobde as his successor. Chief Justice of India Ranjan Gogoi on Friday sent a letter to the center recommending Justice Sharad Arvind Bobde, who is the next in seniority as his successor. According to the memorandum of procedure which governs the appointment of members of the higher judiciary appointment to the office of the chief justice of India should be of the senior most judge of the supreme court considered fit to hold the office under this process after receiving the cgi's recommendation the law minister puts it before the prime minister who advises the president on the matter Chief Justice Gogoi who was sworn in as the 46th Chief Justice of India on 3rd October 2018 will demit office on November 17. He has a tenure of 13 months and 15 days while Justice Bobde who if appointed as CGI on November 18 will have a tenure of about 18 months. Pakistan was on Friday given a fresh deadline of February 2020 by Global Terror Financing Watchdog Financial Action Task Force or FATF to act against terror funding. Pakistan is currently in FATF's grey list if blacklisted Islamabad would have faced financial consequences and economic setbacks at a time when its economy is facing a balance of payment crisis FATF president said if by February 2020 the country has not made significant process we would consider further actions FATF had earlier in a report said that Pakistan has failed to fully implement a UN resolution against the globally designated terrorist Hafiz Saeed and other terrorists operating on its soil.
reality is that the news has tightened around pakistan's neck uh, the world is breathing down even harder now on pakistan's neck uh, and pakistan is being forced to clean up its uh, you know act both on money laundering as well as on terror finance during the fourth day of their trip to pakistan britain's prince william and his wife kate visited a cancer hospital founded by pakistan's current prime minister imran khan William's late mother Diana had made high profile visits to the hospital before her death in a car crash in 1997. Britain's Prince William and his wife Kate Duchess of Cambridge played with children at a hospital in Pakistan's Lahore on Thursday, previously visited by William's late mother Diana. The Shaukat Khanu Memorial Cancer Hospital was founded in 1994 by Imran Khan. a family friend of the prince and the current prime minister of pakistan during their visit the duke and duchess of cambridge spent time with patients and also spoke to their families dina the princess of wales had visited the hospital twice in the 90s in february 1996 and in may of 1997 just a month before her death in a car crash the royal couple also visited a children's home in lahore on thursday and in her first public remarks of the tour kate said the couple were moved and touched by their experiences in the country you have reminded us exactly what family means you have shown us too that is not simply a term that describes the relationship between blood relatives instead it describes those special bonds we share with all those who make us feel safe and supported It is the quality of those relationships that matter. William and Kate, who have frequently donned traditional Pakistani dress by local designers during their trip, have highlighted education and the impact of climate change in the country. It is from Nepal. The Supreme Court of Nepal on Thursday directed the government to make public the Lal Commission report, which was formed to investigate the deadly violence involving police and protesters in the run-up to the promulgation of constitution in 2015. Nearly 50 people, including both protesters and police, had died in confrontations. Nepal Supreme Court has directed the government to make public the Lal Commission report that was formed to investigate the deadly violence in Tirai region when the country's constitution in 2015 was being finalized. The apex court on Thursday issued an order asking the government to respond within 3 months. The commission formed to investigate the atrocities during the Tirai movement in 2015 was formed by the government in 2016. under Girish Chandra Lal a former supreme court justice the commission had presented its report probing into the incidents of killings torture and violent activities to the then prime minister Sher Bahadur Diobas government in december 2017 the rashtriya janata party of nepal whose main concern has always been the rights of madhesis in nepal's constitution through its amendment had also obstructed a parliament proceeding this year demanding the report to be made public Around 500 local and international athletes recently took part in an international marathon held in Bamiyan region in central Afghanistan. The Afghans believe such activities in Bamiyan will send the message of peace and love, mostly known outside the country, for a horrific crime perpetrated by Taliban against cultural heritage in 2001. The Bamiyan region in central Afghanistan is defined by its diverse archaeology, vivid panoramic valleys and rich green meadows. The peaceful Bamiyan province held an international marathon recently where around 500 athletes both from the host country and foreign countries including China, India, the United States, France and Italy took part. This is the fifth marathon over the past 5 years held in Bamiyan province that has escaped militancy in the war torn Afghanistan. و یه اولین بارم بود چون تجربه نداشتم یک مسیر خیلی طولانی و دشواری بود و به خاطر که تجربه نتونستم بازم خوب بود تونستم که دوم بیایم Bamiyan region might be known outside the country for a horrific crime perpetrated by Taliban against cultural heritage in 2001 The Afghans here however believe that organizing such activities will send a message of peace and love while also provide a platform for athletes to demonstrate their talents 
Apart from marathon, authorities also organize variety of social activities including music festival and skiing every year in the province. A Sri Lankan man has made a record of having 50 cubes of ice thrown on his chest from 20 feet in the air. He has earned a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records. A Sri Lankan man named Janaka has earned a spot in the Guinness Book of World Records for having 50 cubes of ice thrown on his chest from 20 feet in the air earlier this week. Janaka had a 370 kilogram stone placed on his chest on which 50 ice cubes each of 50 kilograms weight were thrown. The Guinness Book of World Records' previous mark for the most number of ice cubes broken on an individual's chest was established by a Japanese national named Oyama. In addition to his latest feat, Janaka last year set a world record by bending 22 12 mm steel rods within 48 seconds. The Guinness Book of World Records' previous mark for this stunt was held by an Armenian national named Amin Adams, who bent 18 12 mm steel rods within one minute. The steel rods weighed 900 grams. Bangladeshi border forces shot and killed an Indian border guard and wounded another on Thursday after detaining an Indian fisherman, Indian officials said in a rare reported clash between the two sides. Three Indian fishermen were caught by Bangladeshi officers and two were later released. India's border security force said in a statement. The border guard Bangladesh claimed they fired in self-defense during a flag meeting along the border in eastern Murshidabad. No such incident has happened in the last two decades. India and Bangladesh share a border stretching more than 2,400 miles where clashes have intermittently erupted over what India terms illegal immigrants from Bangladesh. Married women in parts of northern India on Thursday observed fasts for the long lives of their husbands as they celebrated the Hindu festival of Karvachot. The one-day festival is considered auspicious for married women. Married women in parts of northern India observed fasts for the long lives of their husbands on Thursday as they celebrated the Hindu festival of Karvachot. Women in Amritsar city during the day were seen dressed in colourful attires as they performed the rituals on the auspicious day together. Karvachot is a centuries-old tradition in which married Indian women fast for the day to pray for their spouses' good health and success. Women in Guwahati city also offered special prayers to the moon and then saw their husbands through a sieve before breaking their fast on the occasion as part of the rituals. Women wake up before dawn to begin the fast at sunrise and do not eat or drink until they see the moon and their husbands through a sieve in the evening. और इससे हम लोग बहुत उत्साहित रहते इस व्रत के लिए कि ये जब भी ये व्रत आता है तो हमें बहुत अच्छा लगता है हमें इंतजार रहता है इस व्रत का कि हम ये कब आए और हम कब करें करवा चौथ फॉल्स ऑन द फोर्थ डे ऑफ द हिंदू मंथ ऑफ कार्तिक द वन डे फेस्टिवल इज मेनली ऑब्जर्वड इन नॉर्दर्न पार्ट्स ऑफ इंडिया वेल दैट्स द वे इट वाज इन साउथ एशिया दिस इवनिंग बिफोर वी कंक्लूड द टॉप स्टोरीज वंस अगेन Border areas in India's Jammu and Kashmir face heat of Pakistani firing. Global watchdog gives Pakistan until February to act against terror financing. And Nepal's top port directs government to release Lal Commission report. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianNewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianNewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianNewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend and good night.
Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.